Notice that uh, I always use blue in every painting. Like I used it from my childhood when my teacher always tells that never use black, use it purple or blue, dark blue, like Prussian blue for when it's dark, when it's a sunny day. So light is warm, shadows are cold. So we use cold blue for the shadows and when it's a cloudy day, so light is warm and um, shadows are Oh, the light is cold and shadows. I'm super excited, everybody, for you to meet my friend Kate. And she has an amazing art style, and we're going to hear from her today. Hi, Kate. I'm so glad. You Hi, Gabo. Thank you for inviting me. I'm so happy to be in your super nice YouTube channel. I watched your video. You are always so enthusiastic about it. So, congratulations. I hope you will get some bottom <laughs> silver golden <laughs> bottom of you too <laughs> one day will you tell them what it is that you do with watercolor i'm from bratislava slovakia and i'm a professional artist uh, uh, i studied art but i mostly started it in oil painting but when I moved to Bratislava, I started to paint in watercolors because I was more on plein air. So it was easy to bring a small palette, paper, and the all. So I started to paint and started to do exhibitions. And uh, what I said is uh, often uh, selling than oil paint because it's cheaper and for some tourists it's very easy I agree. Uh, art and watercolor specifically is very accessible. It's very affordable. Can you tell us uh, what part of watercolor for you is rewarding? And I like it the most because I'm an impressionist. So I did more colors, more textures, like paintings uh, and so what has helped me achieve uh, this uh, pigmentation nice uh, waves now you do some traveling and you do plein air can you tell us the difference between plein air and studio painting of course i like painting more on plein air because you see better, you see more colors, you feel this atmosphere, and paintings usually are better when they are painted in plein air because they have more emotions, more freedom. So mostly I try to paint on plein air, and then from small sketches, I do with paintings, like mostly paintings you can see here, it's made from my sketches. Even this one with mountains, I take my watercolors and I just stay near the, ro near the rocks and quickly painting them. And this is a Marsha Slope, small village in Malta, very beautiful, We're just sitting near the sea and painting music. That's wonderful. And people probably want to know, like, what type of uh, paints and brushes and paper do you like to use? For paper, I like mostly rolled paper and I like handmade paper when it has very uh, nice structure. So I use uh, Fabriano of paper, all, all of them cotton. Uh, I use also glass fontaine. Uh, had made hardy paper, which I which I bought in for brand. I think you've been there. And for brands, uh, for uh, colors, I use many. Like last time, I use more uh, rosa paints. I like them because they are very colorful and not so expensive, like Daniel Sweet, which, uh, for example, in Slovakia or in uh, Vienna, they will cost around uh, 14 euro. For one tube. And for example, Rosa will cost uh, just one to euro. I have some Rosa paint. Wow, one euro. Yes, <laughs> one and a half, but now they became a uh, more company. 
so now they have a little bit more expensive, but two euros is okay for one tube. Also, I use the chandelier. I have big box of them. I think it was my first for the palace, which I bought, and it was uh, 2016. And uh, there are no, there were, were not so many brands, and Chandelier was the best brand for watercolors, so I bought them and still use it, still love it. Also, I have, for example, one of colors. I won them <laughs> in the giveaway. They're shiny, but it's also nice to use for metallic parts. So I use all colors. I am always uh, happy to try something new. I love it. <laughs> I agree. Uh, experimenting and trying new brands. I mean, you can't get bored, right? Also, to not, to not get boring, I mix in material. So I paint uh, with oil colors, with gouache, with oil pastels, with watercolor pastels. And when did you first notice, or your family first notice, that you were an artist? Uh, I always uh, painted, like from very, very small. But uh, in uh, sixth degree, I understand that I want to go to art school. And I just went to it because it was just across the road. And I had very nice teachers with who I still uh, communicate. Uh, he lives in Russia, but uh, I tried to write him. And even he is uh, eight, 82 years old. But uh, he's very active still. I asked him what he do, and he said, oh, I just painting. I see, I try to paint every day. And, wow, so cool. <laughs> so he's like my uh, Kumir. I want to be like him, painting, uh, teaching people, inspiring people. Uh, because uh, I remember that in um, Instagram of Daniel Smith, they post what? And there was what? Salvador Dali. And this quote became one of my favorites. So now I am uh, printing it on my sketchbook. This quote is, a true artist is not one who is inspired, but one who inspires others. So I want to be that artist who inspires others. Very nice. Now, I, I notice you do a lot of Instagram and Facebook. Well, no. Everybody now needs Instagram. It's just if you want to sell your paintings or sell your courses, you have to do Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest, whatever. So yes, um, well, well, I am not selling from Instagram. I don't know. It's never happened to me. I mostly sell through Etsy. I have uh, 730 something sales and it's my main income. So I do it also for Etsy. Some people, when they want to buy, they also check if uh, the shop has Instagram, who is owner, and when they see. So if the person who is open to the auditory, they are more likely to buy something. Also, I use Facebook to me to communicate with all my friends because now when I meet so many people in Fabriano, in Sofia, in all these art festivals, it helps me to communicate with them, connect, and maybe someday meet on another festival. So I'm very happy that now we have this opportunity. I agree. Like having opportunities like going to Fabriano and going to different events. And I'm so glad that you post these things like on your Instagram. And let's talk about just a little bit, how do you start a painting? Do you look for things? Do you decide, hey, I want to go there and paint? Or do you just, you know, uh, how do you start your paintings? Mm, well, when I go somewhere like traveling, you go on vacation, for example, to Malta, it was my last vacation. And we just, all beautiful places, let's stop and paint. 
does not think in like, what, we should go somewhere friend. No, I'm just always take with me my face, papers. Even if I go just meeting with my friends, I have very small set like that. It can go on the woman's back, just very bright color and very small. I have also very small sketchbook. So you can put it in the pocket and go somewhere to pen. So I always, it's uh, like, wow, beautiful sunset. Let's just sketch it two, three minutes and painting is ready. And then you have some of memories. I have here memories from Fabriano, dogs, nice dogs. <laughs> so I'm, I'm not thinking a long time what to paint or how to choose. No, I just, okay, let's paint. And the so, and uh, uh, I don't like this process of thinking what to paint. Uh, that's why I like uh, commission painting because I watched a previous video with Bandi and she told that she uh, doesn't like so much paint uh, for somebody. And most people who I meet also say, oh, I don't like commission, but I love. Every time, like a customer send me his case, very important. I'm like, okay, I don't need to film what to paint. And every time I see somebody's photo when they want to, to meet painted, I already thinking how to make it be more beautiful. Like maybe a little bit change, compose this, and maybe add some colors, maybe uh, move some people. And usually my buyers agree with my view. They believe me. And uh, it's also like, creative process, so I like it. Like, for example, now I need to paint for painting. <laughs> so after your stream, I will continue working. That's wonderful. And when, is there some favorite uh, colors that you notice that you paint with a lot? Is there a certain name or blues or reds or yellows? Is there certain colors you like to use I noticed that uh, I always use blue in every painting. Like I used it from my childhood when my teacher always tell that never use black, use it purple or blue, dark blue, like Prussian blue for when it's dark, when it's a sunny day. So light is warm, shadows are cold. So we use cold blue for the shadows and when it's a cloudy day, so light is warm and um, shadows are, uh, the light is cold and shadows are warm. So use purple for them. So mostly I use these colors for my um, paintings, but personally my favorite color is green. So I love buying some different tones of greens. And uh, I always was surprised when some palettes of artists I saw on Daniel Smith, they don't have green color in their palettes, they're just mixing it. I can't, <laughs> I want too many colors of green, so I will always use it, or maybe I can mix it, but mix it green with another color to make different uh, tones of it. But yes, my favorite color is green, blue, Summer uh, orange, it's uh, Signoria orange. It's very nice color because uh, it's not like a yellow red. It's more like uh, orange with pink shade. And I like this pink shade. So I use mostly these colors. I quite rarely use brown or red because I mostly paint landscape. And even if it's red roofs, I use orange, some pink to them not like very bright for us. And do you have favorite brushes that you like to use? Oh, I use fine kind of brushes. Like uh, in Sofia, I bought brush from uh, Atanur. <laughs> he do some brushes. In uh, Fabriana, I bought brush from Borciani Bonazzi. I also have this one big brush. Oh, I, I, so I like using brush uh, synthetic one because uh, I'm always sorry about the squirrels. 
<laughs> so I try to use synthetic ones because now it's a very good quality synthetics and it's uh, well, stay longer in good shape than it's when it's uh, pure animal brushes. But I can paint everything. Like for example, I have a lot of a lot of brushes from AliExpress. Many of them, and they are good. They cost like uh, eight uh, eight brushes cost two euros, and uh, wow, they are quite uh, uh, elastic. So you can paint very small details with them. And when it's flat brush, you can do very uh, right line. I don't care. I can paint it very simple. Oh, also I have for, for my uh, plenaire. For my plenaire, I have my favorite brush in the store. It's the current brushes, and there are these uh, with the mural photo. So you don't even need to bring water with you. Oh yeah, you have the Very nice. So for this. Very, for my very small set, brushes, colors, and sketchbook. So here in the United States, people use those brushes that hold the water. They use them for urban sketching. And uh -huh. yes. urban sketching is done in a sketchbook. And they use pens and markers, pastels and those uh, brushes, this is so fun. People that have taken my class and they're wondering, you know, I've already learned the basics and now they're moving more into immediate, but they're not a uh, pro artist like you yet. But what would you tell them that uh, maybe they should do uh, to grow as an artist? I think it's always the same answer, like to paint more and when you go paint, you get more skills and your painting became better. So I think there is no some rule. I don't like rules in art, like, oh, never use white and watercolors. No, why not? If you want, if you can use it beautifully, well, use it. So I think there are no rules. Just uh, be yourself and paint as you feel. Because uh, I know that a lot of artists try to copy other artworks, famous artists, but uh, I think it's not good because you're just copying their style, but you need to have your own style and improve your own style. So just uh, paint as you feel, as you want to paint it, like you want to paint a green sky painted, you want to have red uh, grass painted, because it will be true, and if it's true, everybody will see that in your in this painting to be yourself, and this painting will be very nice. <laughs> That's wonderful. I agree with you, and I think you're one just for that. You are so free in creating your art, and I love how you can just sit anywhere and do a wonderful painting. And could you tell uh, maybe the people that are watching, because uh, you're always doing art shows and you you also do demos. Can you talk about some of the art shows you've done and when you demo uh, in front of a big audience? Shows? Uh, I've had uh, 10 exhibitions, personal exhibitions in Bratislava and uh, many group exhibitions in Bratislava, I don't count them. And uh, now I started to do more international exhibitions. So now I had my paintings in Ecuador, also from this International Watercolor Society. Now I have also my paintings in India and in Poland. So this March in Poland will be International Watercolor Festival. And I will have my short demo there. I'm so happy and so excited <laughs> because I always wanted to have my demo. I even wrote it on my dream board this year. And I got on the next day after writing it that I will have my demo. I said, wow, my dreams came true. <laughs> I too am very excited about showing my work in other countries. And I'm stoked that uh, you have that going for yourself. Can you tell us a little bit about how to uh, apply for 
these international shows. How do you find out about them? So uh, after a festival in uh, Sofia, I became a leader of International Watercolor Society Group Young. And this uh, society have uh, branches in, I think, mostly in every country. So in this uh, branches, we always write in, um, this is our logo. And in these branches, <laughs> there is always some information about competitions, about festivals. Uh, I, I also have my Facebook group where I all, always post a new competition. And I, all, I also, also like when it's free. So I, I mostly post, post when it's free competition, but there is some with quite small prices. It's also very good because when you are a young artist, you don't have like 100 euros to send your paintings. So yeah, and usually there is all information, where to ship, where to send. Also there is Fabriano where <laughs> You can participate, and Urbina is also a small uh, Italian city. I think now more like these artistic uh, cities started to do festivals because also this year I plan to go to France. Also, two of my paintings already there. It will be in uh, Pyrenees, Pyrenees Aldi, yes, small city Aldi. There will be also art festival in August. So if you are just Searching. But mm, when you just Google it, it's always shown you some uh, famous big festivals where prices to participate is very high. And it's mm, not so good quality because there is no like a jury. Everybody who pay, they can participate. So you should know somebody who are in this watercolor society can tell you what, where to ship, where is good festival, where are not. Because if you are, uh, don't know that, uh, you can go to some scam messages because I got on my Instagram like seven times per week. Every time somebody, oh, I want to buy your art at NFT. I want to buy your commission at work. And this message always looking the same way, absolutely the same way and the same. Oh, we have some festival, blah, blah, blah. You always need to check everything. Oh, now it's quite <laughs> dangerous. <laughs> So our society is good. We are all proof artists, so you can easily go everywhere. Don't afraid to send money. Everything will be good. Thank you so much. And I'll put down in the description uh, how they can get to your Facebook group and also your socials. There are other younger artists that really do beautiful paintings of watercolor can you talk about how you see and paint with other younger groups i can say that it's not only in the watercolor it's even in the oil paintings like when you go on every exhibition like uh, this saturday i was on a curator meeting and i was only one young person other people was uh, 60 plus and I think it's uh, because uh, uh, to be that this is difficult and you you always um, have some somebody like your parents maybe who believe in you and who, who can help you because you are not always can earn money sometimes you earn a lot sometimes like in summer nobody buy us and you have no money so you always need to think about it <laughs> so Mm, that's why maybe because uh, old people go there who already have their money, they don't need to earn, and they can finally to be an artist. But uh, I want uh, to show that no, you can do, and I know <laughs> a lot of other young artists who have this passion, and they want to show people that you can earn from uh, art, like you can not only sell your painting, but also do some courses, some workshops. Uh, and uh, thanks to this community, I find more young people who are doing that. And we, I hope once we can make this festival for young artists and it, it will bring more young artists to watercolor and to other mediums. 
That's wonderful. And I think I'm excited that there are people, uh, you know, we're not too much older, you and I, uh, far apart. Uh, but but I'm excited to see there are people our age that are painting, that are keeping watercolor alive. And I've noticed a huge trend in um, what trends do you see on Instagram? What are the trends that are popular for subjects to paint? Trends on Instagram. Instagram is not a good place for trends because uh, the algorithm done that strange because somebody can do very beautiful art, like can be very famous and artistic sphere, but have like uh, 2,000 followers. But uh, some woman who shows the, uh, you know what, can get uh, thousands, uh, hundred thousand followers. So um, I don't like it on Instagram. I like it in the art community. Um, trends, mm, well, I see that people uh, now more often uh, like when it's uh, liquid watercolor, like very easily, like uh, you see this painting and you think, you think, oh, I can do it too, but uh, you, it's very difficult to get so light expression, impression of painting. So I think this painting now in trend more than like super realistic when before people would like very, very precise, hyper-realistic paintings, but now people want something like very easily, very colorful. I found it in exhibitions and festivals because uh, I was on a uh, member of jury in a young uh, competition for young artists by Carsten Wieland, a uh, leader of Germany. And the winner was my friend, uh, and she paints very in light, light, uh, light personistic style. But uh, there are also two people who paint very hyperrealistic, and they didn't get uh, many points from other members of jury. I always put five for points. I can put less because I see a oh, person already put already four in this painting. How I can give it less? But uh, other members were quite strict and uh, they put small points for those ones who paint in hyperrealism. And what subject do you like to paint the most? Landscape, cityscape, seascapes. <laughs> um, yeah, I think this one my favorite. Uh, mm, sometimes, of course, I paint portraits because people order the portraits. And it's good practice because normally I don't paint so many portraits. But before Christmas, I paint only portraits. So everybody gives nice. And uh, after every Christmas, I see that I became better. So this uh, way of commission painting is to prove my art and my style. Um, also, sometimes I paint the still life, like I can paint the bouquet of flowers uh, somewhere. Um, I can paint everything. <laughs> That's wonderful. And I really enjoy your landscape paintings. Can you tell us uh, how important is it to have passion while you're painting? I think it's the main thing <laughs> to have passion. <laughs> mm, well, if you don't have passion, why do you paint? It's like, it's not a place where you could earn money, <laughs> as you can know. So if you don't have this passion, if you cannot live without painting, so you can do other things. I think um, artists only who have this uh, in their heart can do true, can be true art. Oh, I think it also was me who was, I think everybody starts with that, that you can just paint like it's going on and only after that you can lose it. It's a lot of practice, a lot of years of practice when you can understand where you can lose watercolor and where you can stop it. So it will be in a precise place where you want it. It's not, because if every, everything will be lost, it also will be just mess. 
So you always uh, to have the skill to improve, to improve, to make it. Oh yes, it's a lot of practice. I think it's just pain and pain. Try and not afraid to make mistakes. So maybe that's why I use quite cheap paper, so you can uh, relax and maybe just um, put yourself and freedom. So you don't afraid to lose very good quality pay for very good quality color so try 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 and then wow you understand something and then you can try on the best product that's wonderful and i think you're right because we start out kind of you know hard and rigid then we turn to start to loosen up but then we have to learn maybe some rules or some principles and what are those for watercolor principles i think Mm, for watercolors, I can't like uh, choose some for watercolors. I think the principles for every painting, like uh, what is further from us, it will be more light, more cold. What is closer to us, it will be more balanced, more precise. Mm, mm, rules of perspective, um, rules of good composition, what you, where you should put them, how to make a good painting. I think if you know the rules, then you can start to paint with any material. I agree. And I know you're kind of big on fashion and you love uh, beautiful foods. And how is that? How is fashion? And uh, you always show us these beautiful coffees, uh, you know, how are things, do you feel like things influence us as artists? Mm. Well, when you see beautiful things around you, I think it's an influence. But you also uh, should have eyes to see the beautiful things around you. And even if you live in not so good places, Try to see beautiful places. So try to see something nice. Because I live in not so beautiful city like now. Like Bratislava for me, it's amazing city. I love it with all my shots. But I've grown up. It's uh, just uh, with uh, the same way building, just gray one, since gray roads. But when I returned from my art lesson with my teacher, he told me, wow, look how beautiful sunset and look how this building just go. It's very nice. I said, yes, it's really nice. And this is what the artist can see. Absolutely not, not great, not beautiful, great things like boring, where everybody just go like that from work or go to the work. But you, you see beauty in that. Like uh, when I started university, I went to, uh, to underground and see a lot, of, a lot of people just go to the train and I see, wow, it's good composition. Like here is some two trains, there's platform, nice. And it, I think it helps me <laughs> to bear all these uh, boring things and it would be nice, I think. Yes, you know, so many people are walking around like this on their phone. And what you're saying is, you know, put down the phone, go adventure. Because when we get out there and we see things, we open up new opportunities for new things. And I think one other thing people should experience from you is your fearlessness. And you are so bold and you just, I remember at Fabriano, you're like, you know, let's go paint. And you were even painting during the demos of the other artists that were painting. And, and can you talk a little bit how, I think, how did you get past the fear? Uh, some people, you know, they can't even, they don't even look at a white piece of paper and they don't know how to start. And how do you get past the fear? Oh, quite tough question because I was always like that. And even in my school, yes, people would just, okay. Uh, my teacher would say, go away from class because I just was catching a drift from the window on the math lesson. 
uh, so I always been like that, and I want to be free, so I can want, so I can do anything what I want. I want to play here. I want to be like noisy like that. And uh, in school, in university, yes, it was very dark years <laughs> where everybody say no to do that, do that. Always this rules. So you should have another behavior. Oh, they wanted to break me, but they didn't. <laughs> <laughs> but for people who are quite shy, maybe they can go to places where, where quite, like I know in Bratislava, there is botanical garden. It, you can pay just what, one, two euro to enter, and there will be a few people. And you can sit near some beautiful rose bushes and paint them. Nobody can watch you, nobody can ask you. What I like in uh, Slovakia, that that people quite reserved and when you was painting on the street so less people can think me like it can be children children always there not hesitate asking me something or some people from uh, russia from ukraine because when i painting in russia oh my god every second came to me and asking what are you painting what can you paint me my dog <laughs> my house and uh, I think it also was uh, this lesson where you started don't hesitate and just, uh, okay, don't, don't mind what the people say, just do the job. Maybe it also can be for such people just go on some noisy square and just start to paint and try to be concentrated on what you do and not what other people see. Uh, I agree. <laughs> and I think you know, here in the United States, uh, there's more artists that kind of hide in a studio. And I think what we're getting from you is you're very charismatic and you're very free and you're very bubbly and excited to go. And sometimes there's people that need to kind of be in the studio and then get boldness like you and go. And what I'm hearing is you're accelerating, uh, you're growing really, really fast, uh, painting a lot. Uh, and that is that is a key uh, in growing as a professional artist. Um, wow, our time is going so fast. Uh, what would you want to say to someone that's maybe thinking about giving up as an artist? Mm -hmm. If somebody decided to give up, maybe he can just take some time and understand. As I already told that um, true artist is that one who cannot not paint. And if you can live without painting, so maybe you can you have just like a hobby, like when you want to relax, to paint, or to go on some courses, to communicate with people. Yeah, it's also a nice way. Not everybody should be like through artists, but uh, it's always uh, good to have some break, to relax. Even me, like after Christmas times, of course, when I should paint in like four or five paintings per day, <laughs> I, I, okay, if I did for relax, but my relax was, okay, I go on vacation, I will paint on plein air. For me, it will be relaxed because I just cannot not paint. So for other people, maybe you can just uh, relax, maybe to try another thing. Like, oh, okay, you can you don't want to paint with watercolor, try another material, try another technique, try digital art, for example, try uh, graphic design. So there are plenty of things where what you can try and maybe it will uh, help you and maybe it also inspires you. Like you started to do like graphic, graphic design and I say, oh, now I want to have an, again uh, to paint in watercolor. So you don't need to uh, make yourself to do something because it, when you do it without passion, without mood, it never can be good. <laughs> you should have those emotions in uh, what you do. So I think it's like that. <laughs> Thank you so much. That was beautiful. And I know you're going to inspire people that have been watching this. I know there's been people probably taking notes. 
And I think uh, you have so much to offer this world being an artist. You inspire me on my hard days and you inspire my friends. And uh, do you have a website that we can send people to? Yeah, I have my Etsy shop. So here will be all my paintings. Even if I don't sell some originals, I sell prints of it. So most of my art, my exhibitions, everything I write on my Etsy shop. I will send you a link. Well, thank you so much for doing this interview, Kate. I hope I get to see you again and give you a big hug. Uh, it's been such a pleasure getting to know you. And I'll probably have to have you come back on this show because I know there's going to be people that are going to leave some comments uh, and want to ask more questions about what your life is like as an artist. Okay. So thank you so okay. much. I thank you. you. I'm looking forward to seeing this video. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.